I'm Dr. Johnson Haas, and welcome back to GEOS 1000 Dynamic Earth. And in this episode, what I'm going to do is introduce you to, uh, if you have one, the Rock and Mineral Collection, uh, if you haven't purchased it yet, but you'd like to see it first. Uh, and if you don't have one, uh, this is a general introduction of what these things are like, what kind of samples you have. I'm going to kind of show you a little bit about what uh, if you don't have a full rock collection, if you can if you can put together a few rock types from your own or a friend's collection or, or however you do it, every little bit helps you understand this stuff better, especially in a context like a class like this where I'm trying to show you what to look for and how to look at these things. Uh, the videos that go along with this learning module about uh, minerals um, and then rocks, the different rock types as we go through. Um, the... Um, you start to use the rock collection in, in this mineral lab, the first lab on basically dealing with earth materials, uh, the stuff that the planet is made of physically, uh, what rocks are. But first we're going to talk about minerals because rocks are made of minerals. Minerals are specific compounds with a particular chemical composition and, and, and structure, and rocks are just agglomerations of, of particles and grains of minerals. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do an unboxing of this. This is the rock collection. Uh, I got it. And the shrink wrap has already got a little flaw in it, but it doesn't matter. The box itself seems fine. So here's the, here's the collection. Uh, I'd used previously a, a one with 50 samples, but that uh, company, uh, American Educational Products, went out of business. And we were forced to scramble, uh, and we are using this one. So I'm going to open it up. Okay. So what do we have here? Uh, initially, you're going to see a few particles. Some of these, especially mica, is kind of flaky, and you're going to get little particles of dirt and of not uh, rock and minerals. So what you've got here is a nice little uh, booklet. Um, rocks, minerals, and gemstones, and it looks like there's um, a section on minerals. They talk about the hardness scale. They show the specific gravity or density of a bunch of different minerals. Uh, they talk about short descriptions of a lot of different kinds of minerals, and then they talk about rocks, igneous rocks, sedimentary, metamorphic rocks, and they give you some classification graphics that might be helpful to you. Um, to sort of remember the relationships of different rock types to each other. As we go through that stuff, we haven't gone through rock types yet, so you wouldn't be expected to know that yet. All right, so this is the key to the collection. So uh, in here you have a list of the different rocks and minerals that are in the kit. So now we're going to take off the covering. Some of them which produce dust have done so on this foam. And so they're kind of jumbled a little bit from going through the mail, so I'm not going to worry about putting everything in its numerical order, uh, only to put things down into individual uh, positions to make it a little bit clearer to see. Um, but I'm unboxing, so I'm, I, didn't, uh, I didn't rearrange these to put them in order uh, before I opened it up, obviously. So it's a little jumbled, but... Everything does seem to be intact in terms of the samples themselves. Um, and they are a decent size. I'm always worried when you get a collection like this that they're going to be just a little tiny little fragment. You need something big enough to where you can, you can see what the texture is, see what the color is, grain sizes within it. Um, yellow sulfur. It smells like sulfur. This is mica. Uh, muscovite looks like, and very thin. Here's some pyrite, iron sulfide. Be careful, I noticed there's a piece of obsidian in here. I don't want to cut myself on camera, so be careful, but this thing, oh yeah, the one I got, this piece of obsidian, that edge could probably cut meat pretty well, so be careful when you're handling these things. Other than that, uh, there's, nothing, there's nothing particularly dangerous. This doesn't include any, any radioactive minerals. Uh, so that's not a problem. I don't think there's galena in here, which is a lead mineral. I think they started taking those out of rock collections for safety concerns. Uh, so you have in here 
not every one of these um, every one of these little slots is got a rock or mineral sample in it. It also includes a little magnifying glass. Um, I'm sure it's I'm sure it's fine. Um, if you don't have this collection, obviously any magnifying lens could work, but it helps to sort of illuminate the details, uh, the very fine details of the texture of the rock. So the magnifying lens the glass is really nice to have. Um, they put a few other things in here that are kind of that are kind of useful for doing mineral tests, identification tests. So they got a magnet and a nail. They've also got a little streak plate. Basically, it's a small plate that you will streak a mineral. Here's some pyrite. You can streak it against that to do the test. So pyrite, I just picked it up. Um, unless this is calcopyrite. pyrite. No, it's pyrite. Um, should have a black streak. That's basically you're you're using the rock as a as a as basically a pencil, and you can mark up the streak plate. You can wash that off. Um, if you don't have the collection, don't worry about it because the streak plate isn't just a, a scientific technical thing. In fact, here's a nice tile I picked up in Spain, and the other side of it, there's no fuzz on. The, if you find a, a coaster with no fuzz underneath it. You can use that as a street plate. So I'm going to pick up a piece of sulfur, and I just made some yellow markings with the sulfur piece. So it works for different kinds. If you have a cheap uh, piece of uh, tile lying around, I'll do this again. But uh, this is uh, often you'll see in test kits there'll be a black one and a white one so that you can see the different mineral colors on both backgrounds. Uh, this one's kind of a, a, a red ochre, and it still works pretty well for that. So you've got a lot of options there that don't cost anything. If you really want to start exploring into this or get your own collection, also identifying minerals, there is an acid test. Now, this kit does not contain any acid. It's kind of difficult to transport that stuff in this kind of a rough uh, environment. But uh, you don't have to worry about having any kind of industrial acids to do it. Some minerals, like calcite, uh, rocks like limestone will fizz in in acid in a weak acid, and that's a that's a nice test to determine if it's is it, if it's a calcium carbonate mineral. So what you want to do for that is use white vinegar. This has got more acidity in it. It's essentially a stronger acid. You can try to use compared to say uh, balsamic vinegar or or some other kind of a, a softer uh, flavored vinegar. They're, they're not going to have enough acidity to, to get anything to react with it. So just a little bit of this. Put a piece of limestone and white vinegar, you'll see immediately the reaction. So they've included a nail. The magnet is obviously to look for magnetic minerals. Uh, there's going to be a magnetite in here somewhere, and um, I have to find it somewhere on the list. All right, see in feldspar magnetite 13. So if that's in place, I should find it over here somewhere. And yep, yep. there we go. Magnetite. Dead giveaway of what that is is magnetic. There's not very many minerals that are magnetic. So that's a useful thing. A little magnet, any magnet will do. Any magnet. The nail is for hardness testing. It's that you want to compare the hardness of the nail with the hardness of the mineral. So something like sulfur, very soft, a nail is going to scratch into that pretty easy. Uh, but you get something like uh, quartz, and you're going to find that, uh, let's see, where's the quartz? Where's the quartz? There we go. That uh, you can compare the hardnesses of those two, or quartz against glass, or the nail against glass. Glass is a nice, uh, there's a few reference hardnesses for like steel, fingernails are very soft. Um, steel is good to scratch against too to determine hardness. So you can use it, the steel of any kind of steel can to do that, and it's, uh, it's fine, works just as well. Glass is a nice thing to, to scratch against, but where do you get a flat piece, piece of glass that, that's worthless? Um, you, in my experience, it's hard to do, but you, you know, just from some stuff hanging around the house. But any can, I'm using this to have nails in it now, but any can is glass and you can use that to scratch. So I could say, where's my quartz? I'm going to see, can it scratch that? And yep, there we go. It scratched it. It's quartz. Glass is a softer version of silicon dioxide. Quartz is more crystalline and harder. Um, you will find in here probably corundum. Do they have a uh, yeah hardness scale? They've got 
Corundum is right here. So that's hardness of nine. That's as hard as you're going to see in a rock collection like this because 10 is diamond. And the kit would be far more expensive if they included diamonds. So yeah, that scratches against that. So that's the way you can test uh, hardness. Simple tests like this, magnetic properties, uh, something like halite is salty, it's, it's rock salt, so you taste it, it, look, it tastes like salt. Um, the other shouldn't have taste. I would recommend not tasting the copper minerals, by the way. But um, what you've got here is a collection of, of basic minerals. I could show you sulfur already, and there's a little Iceland spar. Or no, yeah, that's gypsum, gypsum, sorry. Iceland spar is calcite. So that's a piece of gypsum in there. And uh, topaz or beryl. There's different minerals that are basic building materials for rocks. So a piece of quartz here, if you look at a sandstone, you're just looking at millions of tiny grains of quartz. Uh, probably also feldspar, but just for the point of argument, I'll say quartz. So um, you have the different rock types as well. In this one, you have they separate rock forming minerals, which are a kind of a collection of uh, minerals that are common, that do actually comprise most common rocks. Some things are very rare, some ore minerals are fairly rare, but rock forming minerals are fairly common, like calcite, uh, amphibole, uh, hornblende, uh, kaolinite is a kind of clay, olivine, pyroxene, these are volcanic uh, minerals, garnet, and it's a really pretty gemstone. So you have ore. Um, metals, or basically ores, uh, like a mining, you, you mine for ore. So metals and non-metals, things that like sulfur, uh, bauxite in here is of course an aluminum ore. And then you have igneous rocks, you have sedimentary rocks, and you have metamorphic rocks. And you can compare and contrast, say, the minerals that make up a particular rock, uh, like a metamorphic rock that's a, a, a gneiss or a schist that has garnets in it. Well, if you have uh, mica, Muscovite, biotite, mica, and garnets, those are the essential minerals that make up that rock. Except you can't see the grains of mica very well in the metamorphic rocks, they're typically really tiny. So, this is the rock and mineral collection. Um, I think it's a decent one. I've seen far worse. Uh, ones you buy for kids, typically the samples may be really small. Uh, you're, you're not going to get as many. Uh, minerals for safety uh, concerns, uh, but this is designed for uh, for college use. Uh, so hopefully that will help you out. In this learning module, you'll learn all about minerals, their properties, and if you don't have a kit, you can still do the lab really well just by doing a little legwork and saying, okay, if I'm asking you these four minerals, among these four minerals, which one uh, has a salty taste? And the choices are quartz, uh, let's pick uh, olivine, bauxite, and halite. Well, just it doesn't take much legwork to figure out that halite is rock salt, and those others aren't. Uh, which mineral is magnetic? There's a list of the, the minerals in the world that are magnetic. It's fairly short. Stuff like that. If you don't have a kit, you can do the legwork that lets you sort of remind yourself by looking up, uh, like on the web, like other, like in the textbook, or even. Uh, some basic information about mineral properties in here. Uh, you can basically, by process of elimination, figure out what mineral goes with what properties and identify them that way. So you don't have to have the hand samples in front of you, uh, but it does help. This is why I recommend it. But if you can't afford it or they run out of supply, um, individual samples of particular rocks, if you can get hold of them, you can still look at them. If you have access to big samples, uh, rock samples uh, in a collection, uh, yours or somebody else's, they, they work even better because they're big. Uh, if you're in Kalamazoo, where I am at Western Michigan University, uh, campus on campus near Rood Hall, where the geology department is, is an outdoor rock garden with a lot of different rock types in basically in boulder size. And I haven't done a video yet pointing to which is which, but you can go there and explore, and it's, uh, it's, quite, it's quite nice. And when the building is open, there's a really wonderful mineral museum inside of Rood Hall. A lot of uh, collections have been donated over the years, and it's, it's a really nice museum. It's not very well advertised, but it's nice. So, uh, that should set you up, and this will take you through Lab 4, which is minerals, and get you started with Lab 5, which is igneous rocks, because I've got a nice little set of igneous rocks here, 
and you can look up the types of igneous rocks that I mentioned in the lab to get kind of a sense of their properties if you don't have them uh, in front of you. So hopefully that will help you out, and I will talk to you again next time.